everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live or no YouTube Live, whatever we are. I don't know. It is awesome to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you had a great weekend. The weather here was a little brisk, but it was sunny. So that was lovely. Got to get my Stampin' Lips on. Ooh, I think today we're doing plumping lips, which is exciting because my lips will tingle later. I know you needed to know this information. So there we go. Uh, I am so happy to be stamping with you today. Welcome to our live event. Let's hope today goes a little better than last week. Um, so I'm gonna do my best my best to ignore anything that needs to be ignored. <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I have some exciting stuff to stamp with you today that I hope you're going to like. One, two, three, four. I know I'm still, I have, um, I have one project that I want to do with you, but I don't have it ready yet, but I think it will be fine. Um, and this is for my very, my, one of my Stampin' Besties, her name is Deb. She is, uh, she and I met each other, well, about 20 years ago. Now, maybe, no, that's not true. Well, is it? Now I can't remember. Do you, do you know how long I've known Deb? <laughs> I don't know. Whitney, you know what? My head is completely blocking you, so you're totally good. Oh, good. <laughs> Whitney's here helping me. I don't know if she's on here, but I love you, Debbie. Um, we have girls that are about the same age. They're about six months apart. So, so say 18 years. Yeah. Well, I don't think we were, pre no, like they were born when we met. I don't know. We met jumping up. She found me on the locator. So it was me too. so good. Me too. That's how you found me, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It, sometimes it works out. So anyway, um, um, and, and I lost my train of thought. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. She asked for a technique. That's the whole point. And I actually have a really cool technique. So, oh, pardon my hand. I am plugging my phone in. I've been meaning to charge it all day and I keep forgetting. And then I pick up my phone and walk off and, you know, so it hasn't been charged all day. My cleaning ladies came today. Thank goodness. I just love when they come. I love that they're still coming. They, they like mask up and everything, but my house smells clean, not like a foot or a teenage boy. And okay, you guys, I love this. This is so awesome. So do you guys know what TikToks are? It makes me feel super old, but TikTok is like, they used to be called Vines, I think. They're just short videos. I think they're kind of like a video form of Twitter. They can only be so long. And so it's all the rage to make TikTok videos. And I mean, like celebrities and normal people make them. And I think it's like a teenage thing, to be honest. But anyway, because like, I don't have time for this. My son is really into making TikToks. And I have to really applaud the effort because he wants his room to be clean in the background of the TikTok. So he totally cleaned his room this weekend. Like, and this kid does not ever, ever clean his room. And now I'm going to die laughing because <laughs> Rachel said she thought it was Tic Tacs. <laughs> nope, Tic Tocs. So he cleaned his room so that he could indeed make these videos. And his first video... I was the subject of, first of all, which I can't even stand. His first video was that he, um, it was, and it's, it's terrible to explain it in words rather than watch it, because obviously the whole point of this is to watch it, but he was enacting when he asks his mom for something and she says, go get your, go get my wallet. So... Which doesn't really happen, although I do that with Ella all the time, but not so much him. Um, her, Ella's is more like, take my car and bring my purse <laughs> to, like, pick up stuff or whatever. Anyway, 
<laughs> um, they're really funny. So then this is even better. You guys are going to love this. So <laughs> this weekend. So first of all, I do not have this app on my phone, but you can see TikToks like, you know, people can share them to other various things. So I, I watched two of them on my own. Like I found them and one was of a dog that would not walk. And it was really funny because my dog does this sometimes. But like this guy is trying to walk his dog and the dog is just not having it. He's the dog's laying on the floor and or on the ground and he's doing nothing. He won't move like people are going by and he is just stubbornly will not walk. And so it was really funny because my dog does this sometimes, like I said. So I sent a link to that. And I did actually share this on Facebook because I really thought it was hilarious. So maybe some of you saw it because um, I just see that Crystal saw it. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, I messaged that and my daughter's like, wait, what, you're sending TikToks now? Like she couldn't even believe it. Well, then I sent a second one and I did not share this one on Facebook, but the second one was really funny too. It was somebody took a box and like the beginning of the video is they drop the box on the ground and then like they snap and it's all painted white on the inside. Well, they made, they made like a miniature, um, art, art, uh, museum. And then they put their pet gecko in it <laughs> and it was a gecko art museum. So it was like a diorama, sort of. It was just like a a little bigger than a shoebox. But like they painted like like a little thing this big and it was like an actual like a Monet or a famous painting. Like there was a um Picasso and I can't remember the other one. But anyway, I said, Ella, you should do this in your free time because she decided to take two weeks off of running. And if you know her, that's like huge. Because they also found out on Friday that they're um, that they are not going back to school this year, and I know a lot of people knew that, but um, th this is new. So anyway, it was a rough day Friday, to be honest. Oh my gosh, we had all kinds of emotions going on here, and Ella um, decided to not run for. Two weeks and I kind of laughed because I was like yeah you say that and then like 30 seconds later you are running well she decided she really needed to give her body a rest because she hasn't stopped running for about a year so anyway she decided um she decided to give me all of her running shoes in a box so I would take them from her so she couldn't run and um so yeah, I'll have to share a picture. I actually made this video of her because um, she was explaining to me every single pair of shoes. And I was like, what Like, what am I supposed to do with like this information? But it was kind of, I guess, a review of her shoes and all the places they've gone, I guess. I don't know. It was funny. In fact, Whitney saw it too. <laughs> she showed right. Whitney. <laughs> it was silly. Uh, but anyway, that's my kids for you. So anyway, it is so great to see all of you guys on here. I love when your little faces pop by um, and I can see your names and faces. That's so fun. We had our first team meeting on Zoom this last week. It was on Thursday night. And it was just so cool to see all of my team members on, on the Zoom <laughs> call. <laughs> and um, to see their faces and hear their voices. And we have cute little accents on our team that I just love because you don't get that in Facebook. Of course, you can't hear people's faces. So that was really fun. I was thinking maybe, um, I think I'll try this on my Facebook class first, but I was thinking maybe we would have like a little fun stamp, like a, a cup and a card night or something where we could all get on and, and make a card and um, share. I don't know. We'll see. And then I actually, I have something fun planned for my team for our next, actually between now and our next meeting, I have a fun little activity we're going to do on Zoom since it went over really well. And it was so fun for people to, um, to just get a lot of 
interaction and stuff. So yeah. Um, Laura, you need to be on my team. I don't think you are. So that's for my team of demonstrators who have signed up under me. Um, I don't think that you're on my team and I am going to be feeling horrible if you are. I don't think so though. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's see what else do I have to share with you? <sighs> I don't know. I haven't watched any more of the tigers. I've of course watched the whole thing on Easter Sunday because that's what you do, right? But um, I did see lots of good tiger um, memes and I shared shared kind of a funny one on there. So that was really good. Um, it is just so fun to have all of those silly things to kind of keep your mind away from all the crazy stuff that's going on. So I love that. Anyway, oh, I have, I gotta find it. Um, I have a prize to give away. Oh yes, here we go. Um, I've got, so when you share this video, um, and preferably the link on Facebook, on my Facebook page, my just, you know, where you used to see me on Facebook for lives, there's a link there. And if you would sh share that on um, on Facebook, that would rock. And I'll put you in the in an enter or in a drawing for free stamps, um, or you know I kind of give out whatever. But I had I had about thirty shares this last time. If we hit a hundred, I'll get prizes. So I used to get over a hundred when I did Facebook Lives. So just share the link, and the link is how you got here. So share that, um, and then that would be awesome. Oh, oh, I was just making a note for myself on something. The other thing is we also, so I'm gonna give prizes when I flip around my camera, I'll, I will give my prizes. The other thing um, is that I also had my first game night my Stampin' Game Night workshop. It was so much fun. We had a great time. We played five games of bingo. We made five cards. It was, a, I think, a pretty big success. It was lots of fun. I am um, already working on, a, on our next game night, which is going to be in May. And it's going to be super awesome. The Tiger King was arrested in Gulf. Ooh, hold on. We got to go back to this one. The Tiger King left, rested in Gulf Breeze, Florida several weeks ago. Ooh, interesting. Like, like you mean Exotic Joe or somebody else? Yeah, Brooke. We need a follow up on that. That's very important. <laughs> yeah, when he's back there saying, please answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? This is these are the important things. Okay, oh. sorry. Yeah, I thought he was in prison too. I'm wondering if that's a different guy cuz maybe there was wasn't did there Carol get arrested? Okay. <laughs> did yeah, did Carol get arrested? She's the one who needs to be addressed, arrested. Okay, Brooke said exotic Joe. Well, I thought he was arrested a while ago. Someone says he's in prison in Oklahoma. That's right to me. That's my understanding on the show is it jeff this one was jeff the one that took over the zoo from oh that guy but he's he's not from florida either but maybe he was in florida like stealing big cats trying to get to carol baskin <laughs> although i really think joe is the only one like completely obsessed with carol baskin but mm -hmm. um the other thing was yeah, somebody asked if I watched the follow-up show, and yes, I did. It was lovely. By the way, a lot more teeth in the follow-up show. Just going to say that right now. Seriously. It is Joe Tiger. He is in prison, all the workers. Why is he in jail? Um, I think he was doing a whole list of inappropriate things. Um, like, like, You're not supposed to sell tigers. Ta like, yeah, illegal sale of exotic animals, first of all. Um, I'm sure there's, like, some animal 
issues. And you know what? I am positive he burned down that oh his yeah, his I'm alligator not, thing not. with the yeah whatever. Oh, and murder for hire. Yeah, I know that, that, too, I that was the it. other one. I don't know if they had enough information on that, but yeah. And then yeah, he killed cats too. But I think that was kind of like the least of his infringements. Although that it seems like you get in more trouble if you kill a animal than you kill a days. I'm just saying, but whatever. Well, yeah, Carol is alive. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but she killed her husband for sure. Um, her second husband, her third husband, and the wedding photos that you can't ever unsee is still alive. Yeah. And someone I saw said that the show is disturbing. Absolutely. Totally, totally, totally. So, oh, Google said he was arrested March 30th. Oh, wow. That is like fresh. Fascinating. Oh, he, who is, how is he getting out on bail? He bail bankrupted bonds. his mother. Bail bonds. Please. He can't raise bail. There's no way. <laughs> I know. It is so ridiculous how like into that show we are. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it was like, oh, a soap opera? Deb, it, it's not even. It is like Real Housewives of Exotic Cats is what it is. <laughs> it's what? worse than a soap opera times 50. It's, I don't know. What color is my nail polish? Um, this <laughs> is month and a half old pink. It's, I do dip, dip manicures. Um, I, my nail, I'm really hard on my nail. Like today, a little sliver of it broke off and my thumb has been kind of a mess for a while, but the rest are really holding up. You can see they're growing out, but I'm holding them on there because otherwise my nails will totally like break. But yeah, it is. It is holding out. I so like more than anything in this world, I want my nails done. I really do. <laughs> Um, it's more fun listening to me describe it, probably. <laughs> Some of it is like, oh my gosh. The third episode is definitely the best one. You have to watch the two to like get the whole gist of things. To but the hooked. Yeah, to become hooked. And then the third episode, you're like, what? And then when you find out what Dr. What is that guy's name? Ant Dr. Antle. Ant Agrabagi oh. Antle. I can't remember his name. But when you find out what he's a doctor of, it is the absolute, like, it's the pinnacle of the show, really. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, we know Exotic Joe is in jail and there's no way he's getting out. Um, yeah. I don't think there's another season. It's oh, just the one. But I do suspect that there's no way they can't do f more after this. Because, I mean, it was crazy. Although, my husband was really excited because this weekend they released the um, Despicable Me movie. And it beat Tiger King for the number one slot on Netflix. And he felt that was good. <laughs> and it probably was. But Mary made a conscious decision not to watch it. You know, I, at first I thought it sounded really stupid, but then when I started hearing people talk about it, <laughs> I just had to. And I'll be honest, you guys, it's just what I do while I'm knitting. It's not like I'm really, I don't know. It's hilarious. It's pretty funny. So <laughs> I just think it's funny to watch. And the people are crazy. Like, that is true. This is not like you couldn't make up what this show is. It, it's no. so <laughs> you listen to the podcast, so you decided not to watch. Well, you kind of got to have a visual to go with what you're hearing because, oh my gosh, just seeing the people. At first, you know, the way they portray in the first episode, you kind of feel for them a little bit, like Exotic Joe hired all of these kind of misfits as he describes it but then when you find out a little more about everything you realize why there's a lot of toothless ex-cons working at this place so anyway it's been a really nice distraction to the rest of the insanity that's going on they're 
they're toothless and they need baths, I would agree. Like, wash your hair. Like, just try to comb through it. It'd be all good. And then there's Carol Baskin. <gasps> I should have started out with Hey Cool Cats and Kittens. I can't believe I didn't do that. That's what she says. <laughs> yeah, in the second show, it is like, whoa! But actually, what was really horrifying to me is that, that people paid money to go into this guy's little zoo. Like, that was kind of the I couldn't wrap my head around. Like, what? Ooh, what Gail asked. Hold on. What did Gail ask? Are we stamping today? Well, of course we are. You guys, you know we have to chat about important world events. That's just what we do. It has been a long time. So let's, let's, okay. I'll stop talking. I just wanted to chat with my girls. Okay. Um, you prefer relatively normal people? <laughs> Come on. Where is the fun in that, Brooke? <laughs> All right. Um, I don't have any tiger cards for you today. Sorry. I could. We have a lion stamp, but we're going to make a toucan card. Oh, well. All right. I'm going to flip the camera around for you. So hold on, everybody. Um, Teresa, I know when they were getting Walmart, like oh. reject food, that kind of made me a little grossed out, actually a lot grossed out. And I'm not even like an animal rights person, but that one did kind of get me. Okay. So, um, I am so excited to share with you in Fort Worth for prison. Well, that's close to Oklahoma. I've driven, I know. Okay, <laughs> first of all, I have um, of a stamp set drawing winner and it is Deb Glab. I guess I should write that on here. Um, so congratula congratulations to Deb. And I was actually kind of relieved that she got this because the set is called Grandma's House and she is actually a grandma. Um, I I know Deb, actually, she lives not too far from me. Well, like an hour-ish from me. Anyway, so congratulations to you, Deb. I'll send this out. Um, but what I really like about this stamp set are these cute little images. I think these are cute. So even if you're not a grandma, this is a good set. But I do love this, what happens at grandma's. I think they, we need like what happens at Dina's for sure. What happens at the Creativity Cave stays at the Creativity Cave. I believe that really would work. Um, but it is a really sweet set. So congratulations to her. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. Have you seen, um, have you seen, I haven't seen if she's been on here yet. So anyway, congratulations. Is this in the catalog? Yes, this is in the annual catalog. It is actually, I just got it myself. Um, it's fun. Oh, the honeybee stamping hives. Yes, the workers were eating the expired Walmart food too. And he paid them like a hundred bucks a week or something like that. Like it was insane. Oh my gosh. Uh, so many bad things. Like he had to have been like skirting all sorts of laws. <laughs> anyway, um, so congratulations, Deb. Actually, here you go, Whitney. Thanks, I'll mail it. <laughs> She's like, I'll mail it for you. That's what Whitney does around here at least one of the things all right so I have a fun okay actually the first thing I want to do is um my friend Deb asked for a technique and I had so I have a bunch of requests this week so we're going to try and get as many of them in as we can but the first one was she wanted a technique and so I thought it would be really awesome to do um oh Deb's on here yay so okay um I thought it would be really awesome to do something with our, um, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to, get, here we go, with our embossing paste. So we have two kinds of embossing paste, I think. I don't even know if we have both kinds, to be honest. I know we have regular memory. I'm not positive. So I, um, <laughs> I have to laugh. I... I thought I had to throw all this away when we moved my embossing paste. And so I didn't think I had any. And then I found it. I didn't, I, I must have bought it myself. I don't know, whatever. Brought it myself. So I have a, I have a brand new thing of embossing paste. But this weekend, so first of all, I have to tell you guys, I, 
love making videos. I rarely watch videos. I, I don't, well, mainly because I don't have time. But I, I just don't watch videos all that often. I don't know. Anyway, so I was watching a video and so cool. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, can someone do some housekeeping for me? <laughs> Wait, come here, Whitney. Look at this. <laughs> okay, I don't think anybody's caught that one yet. Oh, let's see. Remove. Okay, that's funny. Um, okay. But I'm going to take my embossed paste, and we're going to do a couple of techniques with them, and I'm really excited about this. So. I know, right? Sorry guys, I'm just grabbing something. Oh, what the heck? Do you know, can you help me for mm -hmm. a second? I have like, you know those masks, decorative masks? They should be right in here. Let's see them. Hold on guys. I'm wondering if I put them somewhere else because I was gonna use them. This drawer. No, 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 they're not there. Um, okay, sorry, hold on a second, guys. Oh, wait, maybe they're over here. <laughs> I pulled out my, my decorative masks because I wanted to use these with them, and now I, of course, can't find them because that is, like, the story of my life. Oh, maybe they're in here. I know, that is like the story of my life. Okay, well, the reason I wanted to do my decorative masks first is because I have a couple of cool techniques with them. So, um, oh my gosh. And if anybody can help um, with a couple of these posts I'm seeing, that would be awesome. So... No, I don't think they're over there, although that is a good place to look. Okay. So first of all, you open this up, and what's really important... Thank you, Fran. I appreciate it. Uh, what's really important to know with the... You do not want to leave it open for very long, so even talking, I'll close it up. You also um, want that whatever you use with it, you wash right away so that you don't destroy it. So that's good advice as well. Um, the first thing that you can do with paste. So first of all, you can just use it plain, which is great. You can um, put it on all kinds of different things like you can create, you know, like snow and different stuff like that, which is great. Now I'm looking for my palette knives. <laughs> See, I knew that this is bad because... Guys, give me one second. I don't know where they went. Um, well, ooh, there might... I'm so kicking myself because I pulled these out the other day, so I use them today. Okay, well, we're gonna improvise just a little, and actually that's sometimes where the best stuff comes from. So first of all, we have, um, we have palette knives from Stampin' Up. I ha actually happen to have this, um, I have this cake frosting. <laughs> cake frosting knife. This is like an actual art artistic palette knife that I had a long time ago. But um, it is, yes, it is messy. 
some really cool things. So I wanted to show with you guys a couple things that you can do. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is, um, I really am mad that I can't find my masks because that was the really, like the most important thing, but you can make your own mask too. So let, let's see. Ooh, I know. Um, we're going to make a mask, I think. Ah, they're making me angry. Hold on, guys. I'm just going to look one more spot. We're going to give up on looking. Okay. So is make a mask. And I'm trying to think of a dye that I can use. Oh, actually, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. So this is, we'll see how this works. Um, no, actually, that's not going to work. But thank you. That's a good idea. <laughs> Ooh, these could be cool. <gasps> yeah, sorry. Okay, I've got this one actually might be really cool. Ooh, give me the other one, too. All right, so I happen to have these die cut pieces. We're going to use these as masks. Now, if I were to do this again, I would probably cut these out of vellum just because it would um, give you a little bit better result because uh, the vellum is not porous. Okay, so I'm going to start with just a scrap of paper. Um, I know. Uh, what die is... Oh, the... This is the die that goes with the um, abstract impression stamp set. I think it's, mm, I want to say it's called springtime impressions, something like that. Um, and then there's a butterfly in, in that one too. A big butterfly, actually. Well, never mind. I'm not going to look for it. Uh, okay. So what I want to do with both of these is I want to make, I, or I want to, ooh. I want to put them on cardstock. I'm also going to put this on a little, I'm going to do watercolor paper. Now for a couple reasons, watercolor paper is a little thicker and you guys, this is so going to be worth it in the end. I know um, I'm kind of scrambling here. I really thought that those masks were just sitting right on my desk. I'm kind of ticked that they're not, but whatever it is what it is. Okay. So you're going to pick up a little bit of your, of your, um, paste. You don't need much, by the way. It's all right. But it is mind boggling. Okay, so I'm just going to put this down like so on here. And you're just gonna, and this is why you really need a palette knife, because you want to scrape off the excess. Now you can see once you've got a, an, a good amount on here, then it kind of just holds in place. So that's good. By the way, I'm using, these are the dies from the paint. What is this set called? Please tell me these aren't discontinued because that would just be with my luck. No, they're not. Hold on. I'm going to grab the set so you can see. It's from the stamp set. Thank you, painted glass. I knew you guys would be on here. All right, so I've got this on here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna clean this off. Close this up. Um, are they under my mini chopper? <laughs> no, thank you for asking though. Um, they're usually I find. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this off like so. And then look at this. And these dies are perfect for them. So really cool. And um, there's actually several dies that would work for this. So I just cut that. And then there's these different pieces. Oh, they're on here. That makes me happy. This is for you. Okay. Now, here's the really great part is we're going to sit this down and let it dry. Okay. Now, that one was on water paper. I'm also going to do one... Let's see if we can even read. I'm also going to do one with just regular white cardstock. We'll see if this these will stay in place to do it again. I don't know. 
Um, if, uh, by the way, if you don't have, thank you. I, I hope this is worth the wait. My gosh. Oh, just take, you know, as soon as today is live, I'm going to find them. Okay. So I'm just going to do this again on here because I really like, and we're going to leave this one just be plain. So I'm just spreading the paste on here. Like, they can just screw off all that excess, put it back in your ring. That's the beauty of it. And I would even go so far as to say, throw this in a Ziploc bag to really make sure it stays, it stays nice and it doesn't dry out. Okay, perfect. Look at that. We're getting to, oh, sugar. See, that's the problem with cardstock, is it? But whatever. It's okay. It's all good. Oh, perfect. Okay, I would say these are probably dead. <laughs> we'll just scrape off that little teeny bit there. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm gonna let these dry. Um, I think we can probably this up with our heat tool. Let's see. Oh, you know what else you could do? Actually, yeah. Um, so let this dry do a couple of little fun things we're gonna just sprinkle on a little bit of um embossing powder so oh, kind of just never know what we're gonna end up with by the time it's all over if I wouldn't have started I got too much of it dry oh well 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 it'll have some gold accents it's all good Oh, actually, that's going to be kind of cool. Look at that. tell you that this is, you know, it's sort of puffing up, but maybe it's flattening down. Normally, I've let this kind of stuff just dry on its own. And I'm heating it from the back, too, because under on the back side, you know, is where there's going to be moisture from this, too. Okay, so my idea was I dried it a little too much, um, but to sprinkle some powder on here and then gold accent. This is kind of some cool part to it, so that that's okay. Um, I will also say that I do have a wet wipe here, and I'm going to use that to clean off my um, palette knife. I what I would say is throw this in some water right away. But the thing with um, the thing with this is you just don't want to let it dry because especially in the plastic palette knives, it will leave crusty stuff on there. And then so when you're using those decorative masks, you want to put them in water. You don't ruin them because it can be very very challenging to get all of the stuff out. Okay, so now that we've done this, um, 
Uh, you obviously you have a raised effect. Now, yes, people are saying you can add reinker to them. Yes, yes, yes. That's kind of one of the more basic things. So I didn't really necessarily want to cover that today because, like I said, it's a little bit more basic. Um, but what I wanted to do was maybe kind of add some fun highlights. So this didn't work. I'm actually going to knock out one other little thing. So one of one of uh, the requests for today was to use some shimmer paint in rubbing alcohol in a spritzer. So if you've never made this before, actually I can make a little bit more of this. I haven't done this in a long time. So I've got some rubbing alcohol. Note 70%, not 100, or sorry, there isn't 100, not in <laughs> consumer availability, but there is rubbing alcohol at 93% maybe. You do not want that. Um, it will make your shimmer paint clump, so that's not good. So I'm going to take my shimmer paint in these little um, bottles, and you can see there, like this one's frost white, so that's what we're going to use. And then what I'm going to do is just put like a little blop in here, approximately the size of a pea. So that's about right. And you can see I'm not measuring super specific, but yeah. Anyway, so good. So I've got that in some rubbing alcohol. Then I have a little pipette that I don't even know this. I have a few not pipetting's purposes. I think crafting kit or maybe it was in one of my, ooh, sorry, one of my kids' science kits. I find this is, is a really easy way to deliver alcohol in here. And I also use rubbing alcohol to increase the life of my clear wink Estella, by the way. That is a good use for my rubbing, my crafting rubbing alcohol. Okay, is that. Okay. Then I'm gonna put this back in here and I'm gonna shake it up really good. And what I'll do is it'll mix all this. It will have frost white shimmer paint. So I've written that on here. So this is just one of our regular Stampin' Spritzers. So the cool part about this is, and by the way, I have like got paste under my fingernail, which is gross, but it's okay. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is you can um, spritz this on and I'm spritzing a really heavy coat. <laughs> so there we go. Someone's asking how I use it in Clear Wink of Stella. Well, let me show you. Today's gonna be all about tips, I guess. So here's my clear wink of Stella. It's um, it's pretty well loved. It's it, it's been used quite a bit. You just gotta get under this little thing here. Take your pick tool is gonna do that. There we go. And what happens is a lot of times when you pull this up you'll see that there's clear wink of Stella stuck to the sides like that. See that? Okay, that's all good shimmer. But the liquid part, maybe we've used it all up. So I'm going to bring my rubbing alcohol back in. And I'm going to use that pipette again. And then you can check this out because it's kind of cool. Um, and this, by the way, not like a little bit goes a long way. So you can uh, see... There's some on here, and I'm just kind of trying to do this so you can see it without it spilling. I'm just squeezing a little bit of the rubbing alcohol onto this. It's it's almost like um, shimmer sludge. <laughs> sort of, not crusted, but it's thick, like pasty up at the top here. And then I'm just kind of using my rubbing alcohol to basically my shimmer paint that way. Okay, so now it's pretty much on. And I can also feel that my shimmer paint is quite full as a result. So when you take this all out, if you look at it, can you see in there? So now all of that shimmer is kind of in there. So we'll fill this close this back up okay 
and then, oops, that's not right. <laughs> I'll screw this back on. <gasps> yeah. Okay. I'm full of good tips. You guys just, you have no idea. <laughs> anyway, you shake it up and then that's all good. All right. So then what I'm going to do next is come back to this. So this was our frost white. Now, do you see how much shimmer is on this? So there's lots of shimmer on this and we're going to, we'll do a little later as well. But lots and lots of shimmer. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this piece right now, but I know what I do with this piece. It's still a little wet, so I'm going to dry it. Because this is a really cool technique that I'm going to do. So let's dry this up a little bit more. Oh, by the way, this is my Stamparatus magnet. It's stuck to the little metal thing on my heat tool, which is kind of funny. I have these uh, in the same drawer. <laughs> So I just want to dry this really well because the next thing I'm going to do is wet it. Um, it's on watercolor paper because I want it to, to be, uh, we're going to do a watercolor technique on here. So I wanted to make sure that it was on the right paper for that to work well. Like just like before I'm um, heating. So what it's the paper is thicker so it takes a little longer to dry <laughs> okay so hopefully we're good all right yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my aqua painter. And first rule is you want it to be clean so there's no color. And I'm seeing that the color that I that's on my bristles is probably just stained on there, so that's fine. And I'm literally going to squeeze some water out and kind of spread it all over because what I want to do is is some wet on wet watercoloring all right and well i figure it's only natural that we take the best color ever all right so i'm going to pick this color up and just blend it out oh so pretty okay I'm just putting some color down. Uh, I think I'll add a little bit more color. It is the best color ever. I'm glad you totally get it. Okay, here's a little Pacific Point, which, ooh, that's than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, cool. All right, so isn't that pretty? Now, I know this is going to dry lighter, so um, what I'm going to do next is heat again. So it doesn't resist the color really, it, but it does kind of take it on, I guess, in a different shade. And of course the texture comes through. So it looks pretty cool. Just trying to dry up all that water. Okay, so isn't that cool? Um, the retired list is going to come up um, Wednesday. What's today? 20th, 21st? Yeah, Wednesday. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little more color on here. 
because why not? And then I'm going to add a little bit more Pacific Point. And I'm going to add some Pacific Point. Oh, I think my pad is just a teeny bit dry, so I'm going to put a little dab on here. Um, and it's going to be dark. Really dark. Squeeze my water out here. adding a little more color just to make it a little bit more interesting. This is kind of cool. Okay. Isn't that pretty? All right. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I am digging this a big time. Now, to finish this up, first of all, I'm gonna let it dry on its own without heating it. So we'll come back to this in just a little bit, okay? Um, but we're also, we're gonna, we're not quite done with this, but I want it to dry be before I do anything else to it. So we're gonna set that one aside. All right, I'm also gonna take and wipe that off before I get it on anything else, because you know that is the next thing I'm gonna do. So I'm going to come back to this and then I've got a couple other cards that I've got ready to go. So let's work on those for the time being. I'm also going to put the rubbing alcohol back on here. It does. It is a little bit messy. Um, and a lot of stamping techniques technically are. They are a little bit messy, but um, sometimes it's kind of fun. You have to be in mindset or mood for that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, it is fun. Okay, the next thing I want to share with you is a super cute and super easy card uh, featuring the um, Ornate Garden Suite. So I have... Um, I was going to say, I know I've got an embossed one of these. Hold on. Here we go. So the um, Ornate Garden Suite is that preview of next year's catalog. I've got an online class that just came out with that. So if you would, are interested, I still have pre-cut cardstock packets for it. You can order. And the link is in the description of this video. And I'm going to start with a thick Whisper White card base. I'm going to set that aside for a second because I want to cut... A piece of cardstock. Now I shared this tip before, but I'll do it again. Um, so there's some print, beautiful printed paper that goes with this suite. And if you take this and cut it, sometimes when you use the trimmer, you get that little kind of ridge from after you cut. But if you push your cutting and scoring blades together then you don't get that ridge. It's super nice. So it's nice and smooth across the top of that. I love that. Okay, so I'm just cutting a piece to four by five and a quarter inches and with my trimmer. And then I'm going to adhere that to my card base here in a minute. I also took a two inch by four inch strip and embossed this with the beautiful new embossing folder that goes with the suite. And um, by the way, I'm going to show you, this is, this is the special, there's of this, but there's the stamp set, the dies, little gold, um, they're called gilded gems, there's a ribbon cut, the folder that I just mentioned, um, and then there's a second bundle with um, stamps and everything, so it's a whole big mega suite. Anyway, so you can order that this month. It's my special. If you order the whole suite from me, you'll get the online class for free. Yay. Um, if you want to order just the class from me, you can do that. I have online or online card stuff. So it's up to you. And we make actually a ridiculously cute boxed set of cards to go with that. So I'm just going to trim this off 
to create my little banner end. I could use my triple banner punch, but the reason I didn't do that is because I wanted to know, or I didn't want to um, such a deep cut. I want it to be a little narrower. Okay, so I'm gonna attach that to my card with some glue. All right, then, um, actually, I'm gonna attach this first. Sorry, why did I put the cap back on? My gosh, that was crazy. Okay. By the way, since I came or figured that tip out about the trimmer with the scoring blade and the cutting blade together, I found that I've used my trimmer so much more because it really bugged me before when it didn't um, when it didn't have a nice edge on it. And so now that I figured that out, it makes me very happy. Okay. Next up, I'm going to take a stitched shape square. This is the largest stitched shape. And I'm going to do a little stamping. I've got this cute little flower from that. And then, um, hold on, I'm reading a comment here. I get a little freaked out with lined images with so much to color in like that huge bundle. Oh, well, Sharon, just hold on. We'll, we'll get you figured all out. Don't you worry. Okay, so I'm going to take this cute little image and just stamp it in some terracotta tile ink. like that cutie patootie and then I've also got the thanks this is from the ornate thanks stamp set what I love about this is we've got the thanks but then we've got little words that kind of coordinate with it so I've got thanks and then ever so much look at how sweet that is I really like that okay oh my gosh I just stuck my finger in bank pad but that's kind of par, par for the course around here okay so <laughs> Whitney is like on the spot helping me today I, today's a messy day I guess jeez okay um <laughs> so I've got that on there and then um I'm going to um, adhere this to my card like so and then I can do actually you know what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna take my clear wink of Stella you know that we just refilled and I'm just gonna color this in and this will probably blend the ink just a just a little bit but that will be kind of pretty Okay, and then I'm going to do um, a little gilded gem on here. Okay, so they come like this in three sizes. I'm going to use the little one. Now, someone earlier had asked about the tacky part of your take your pick tool. So let me show you that. First of all, it comes like this. And um, in the picture, someone posted, it was really weird looking like this This piece right here was pulled out and I'm not 100% sure how or why that w happened or why that was you want to keep the two together so what you do is you squeeze you you put it in um, and and turn it and then what I'm going to do is just crank this a little till you can see a little of that tacky stuff is coming out now once it comes out I'm going to loosen it a little bit um, and so there's no pressure on here right now because I don't want it to like ooze all out like a, you know, like toothpaste. So yeah. Um, so then that little tacky bit is out and then I can just pick up my cute little gem and place it right in the center there. So that's really awesome. So yeah. Um, and that just is how you use that. Now I can use this a bunch of time twist till I see a little come out and I will undo the tension. I'm gonna spew out <laughs> and that's how I use that. Um, so that works really well. Okay, 
So that's how I use my take your pick tool. And here is my cute little couple. But I love the layout with the last um, kind of banner right there. And then this is the DSP. If you want to check out how I refilled my clear wink Estella, you can just watch the replay when we're done. I'm not going to go over it again because I want to keep moving on. We've sort of, I feel like today's a little bit of a failure to launch as far as my projects are going. But we're going to, we're going to get there. Okay, my next card is going to be with the Over the Moon stamp set. Um, for this, I have taken and... We're gonna, I embossed once again. This time I embossed the brick wall embossing folder. It's really cute. And um, I'm going to just fold this card in half. And if you have been watching me for a long time, I love white on white cards. I, I kind of like that. I love colored cardstock too, don't get me wrong. But some, there's something about the clean look of white on white that I just love. So anyway, I embossed that folder and I'm gonna put it on my card like this. And that looks super sweet, okay. Um, but then what I'm gonna do is I've got a three by four inch piece of Whisper White cardstock that I had cut ahead of time. And I'm gonna stamp a cow on here. And oh, we could do any of these. Um, I love, there's so many different um, things you could combine on here, but uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this sweet cow with the daisy because it's just so cute, right? And then I'm also going to do the You're Utterly Fantastic. You could, well, actually I could do how, How's It Going. I don't know, whatever. Um, how's It Going? Cause you know, like it's a good, a good, hey, how are you doing? Kind of card for right now. All right, so I'm going to, and oh, and I also wanted the grass from the stamp. There's this cute little grass image. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're so excited that you're here. We are on our second full card, but we started another card, which we're going to come back to in a little bit that we used some embossing paste on. So I'm kind of excited about it. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp this in some black memento ink and that is so I can color it in with my Stampin' Blends. Okay. So I'll just stamp that kind of in the middle here. That looks cute. And um, I'm going to also add, oops, well, actually I'm not going to use my memento for this. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my blends. Hold on. So I wanted to color my cow in with a, with a few different blends. So I'm going to start and I'm going to use black for the spots. This is actually light black. You could, you could do a little blending on here if you want. I find that on these tiny little areas, you don't see much of it. So I'm just going with that. Um, so I'll do the spots and I'll also do the tail here and the hair up here. And then um, I'm going to take and put a little bit of Granny Apple Green. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to use Granny Apple Green uh, for that. Well, oh my gosh, never mind. Sorry. I'm gonna put a little light right there and a little dark right here. So that looks cute. And then I'll kind of draw a line on the stem. And then I'm going to do the flower in, this is Mango Melody. So I've got some dark. And I'm putting just a little bit at the base of each petal and then we'll blend out with the light. 
Okay. Um, someone, Sue said, you get the glue showing through sometimes. You hardly need any glue at all. Like half of what you think, maybe even less. Um, our liquid glue, just a teeny tiny little bit goes a really long way. So in fact, I'll show you when I layer this up here. So just give me a second and we'll get to it. But you would be surprised how little glue you actually need. Okay, so there we go. Our cute little daisies all colored. Um, and then I want to do um, a couple other little touches. So we've got the ears which I'm just gonna color in with pink. And then um, same with the little nostrils on our cute little cow. And then I'm gonna do the hooves in some, this is smart, dark smoky slate. So a little bit lighter color than the spots on our cow. And then I think we should do the boots in red. <laughs> um, I just think it's going to be super cute. So that's kind of how I picked it. I'm going to use the other side here. Okay. So super cute. I'm missing my dark red marker. I'm not sure what happened to it, but that's okay. All right. So next up, what I want to do is I really want to make this um, kind of pop. And right now it's cute, but it doesn't really pop. It's just there. So to do that, I'm going to bring in some of my blending brushes. Now my blending brushes are... Um, ones that I've gotten on Amazon. They are makeup, oval makeup brushes, okay? So oval, um, they're really inexpensive. The cheaper, the better. There's no brand. People ask me the brand all the time, just the cheapest ones you can find. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna take some Balmy Blue ink and some granny apple green ink and i'm gonna just take and pick up some color on here now the first thing i always do when i use my blends is i get rid of a little bit of that initial ink and then you'll get better blending that way so i'm just going to color some along the bottom like that okay and doesn't that make this pop oh my gosh it's so cute now just wait, because we're going to add a little more to that. Um, so what I'm going to take is my Granny Apple Green pad and then the grass stamp. And then I'm just going to stamp the grass on here a few times. And look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. Um, Sherry, I don't have a separate brush for each color. I've got about... Oh, a dozen of them or so that I use mainly. So like you can see, this is the green one. So I'll use this for a variety of shades of green. Um, this is my blue one. I also have an aqua one. So the blue one is going to be for like balmy blue or night of navy or well, those are kind of the two colors I use for it. Then my aqua one is going to be for pool party, coastal cabana, Bermuda Bay. So you just want to switch them out. And then I also will just get rid of the excess ink when I want to switch shades of green. So, okay. So that's pretty easy. All right. Um, the next thing is I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to use, this is balmy blue. And again, I'm going to get rid of that first bit of ink so I don't get any weird smudges. And then I'm going to put in the sky. Now, one thing I noticed is I'm picking up some of the green from back here, so let's get rid of that. Okay. 
and we should be good. So isn't this so cute? Okay. So now I think that my cow really pops out on this and it looks really sweet. All right, so let's finish this up. Now, especially when you put it against our our white on um, white card, it really does definitely pop out for that. All right, I'm going to dress it up a little bit, though. So I'll take some of my white baker's twine. Got a brand new roll here. And I'm just I a little a little bow here. Oh my gosh, I, I might be able to tie a little bow, I don't know. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get my nails done. When when will that be? <laughs> like this week yet? <laughs> that is my I have a couple of indulgences. Uh, one is having um, a cleaning lady and the other is getting my nails done. Like those are the two things that I love that I earn enough money in my business to do for myself and my husband can't say anything. <laughs> Actually, I kind of think he likes the cleaning lady. I used to go to this guy before we moved. I went to this guy who always told me my nails were very sexy. <laughs> And I always thought, well, I'm doing it for the ladies, but thanks. <laughs> He's like, your husband will think this is very sexy. I always thought that was funny. Okay, so there we go. I love this. Now I'm going to pop this layer up onto my card. And then we're going to add our sentiment because we haven't done that yet. For that, I'm going to punch it with my cute little classic label punch because it's just so handy. Like so, and that should fit our, our little sentiment really easy. This is another great way to use, you know, you have these leftover strips when you cut cards down. That's so awesome. Sorry, I feel like I'm missing something. Did someone else see a little alien face on the cow's snout? <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, but okay. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to, I don't see it, but that is really hilarious. Now you can't stop seeing it. What, am I missing it? Huh. Do you see an alien on the cows? Mm -hmm. Yep, I see it. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a cow. So cute. <laughs> he is so cute. I sent my friend Kelly a cow card last week. That's why I'm making this. Um, as kind of just a silly card to send to her. So anyway, how's it going? All right. Now for this, I'm just going to um, adhere that right down here and I'm going to put it on with my liquid glue. Now we, somebody was mentioning earlier about glue. So here we go. Um, I'm going to put just a teeny tiny little bit on here. Okay. Do you see how much that is? Not much at all. Like it's not much and it's not going to ooze out. So it's all good. And we'll just set it right there. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh. Someone says it looks like E.T. That's true. It does. Now I see it. Okay. I'm seeing it. That's funny. It's. <laughs> I think I get what you're saying now. You're not going to be able to unsee it. Oh, well. It's okay. But I think it's super cute. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, obviously in Iowa, we have a lot of cows here. So this is a sweet card for anybody though. I just think it's a good, hey, I'm thinking of you, what's up in your life card kind of thing. All right. My next card um, is, well, actually I'm going to come back to something I was going to, I was going to 
going to do next week, but somebody asked about it this week. Um, this big, huge image in the ornate style stamp set. Let's do something with that. Oh, where is mine? Ooh, weird. Where is mine? Must be out on my desk here somewhere. Okay. For this big image, um, it can be a little intimidating to stamp and color all of that in, right? So let me give you a couple of suggestions on how to do that quite easily and without spending your the rest of your life <laughs> trying to color it. Uh, and, just, and picking up a few things here on my desk. Like, I gotta cover this embossing powder before I spill it. Okay. So what I want to do with this, and actually for this, I'm going to enlist of my Stamparatus. And the reason is because this is the kind of thing where um, I want to be able to stamp this again, like really, um, really accurately um, for the technique that I'm going to do. But you don't have to. You could do this just on a regular card. That part doesn't. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna pick up my stamped image. All right, so I've got this on my Stamparatus. I'm gonna grab a piece of cardstock. And um, let's see. I'll just set this down right here. We'll ink it up. And I'm going to ink it up in some memento because then we can color it with blends. But you could do whatever, you know, whatever method of coloring you want to use, use the appropriate ink. So, oh my gosh, don't do that though. By the way, I'll give you a tip for this. The problem is, as, as always, whenever I stamp, I end up with this much space on my table to work with. I'm just going to flip that over and we're good to go. Okay, so I've inked this up, stamped it down, and there we have it. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now I want to use this again, so I'm going to stamp it once more, or I need to stamp it once more. Um, this time, though, let's see. Ooh, I know. Let me give you another little tip. I just got to grab a piece of vellum. Okay, so I'm just stamping this again on the vellum. And the reason, actually... The reason is because then I can move my cardstock around so that I get it exactly where I want it to be. And because I've got the vellum, I can see through and see where it's going to be. So I want it centered in my cardstock, whereas it was kind of off in the corner of the last piece. Okay, so there we go. Now, once again, I'll ink it up. Now, here's my tip for inking this up. First of all, clear some of the stuff off your desk. I mean, that just helps. Um, but then I'm going to just take my stamp case, set this down right here. Okay, and then look at this is going to hold up this. So um, I can, once again, ink it up. I'm going to do one quick thing here. And that is... I'm going to clean this off. Sorry, I took a chamois and cut it in half so that I could use it more easily to clean stamps. Um, the stamp had a little Versamark on it and I think it was sticking, like little fuzzies were sticking to it and I just wanted to clean it off so I'd get a little nicer impression. Okay, so now that I did that, I don't want it too, too wet so I'm drying it. Okay. All 
Oh, somebody asked me why I have tape on my, um, yeah, I used to have washi tape. I think you need something a little stronger than washi tape, though, like painter's tape to hold on to the magnets so you can pick them up a little easier. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp this down like so. All right. So this is going to be kind of the basis of my card. And then we have the other one that we stamped. And then we're going to color part of this. All right. So let's let me show you how I'm going to do that. So let me get rid of this because we're done with the Stamparatus now. Okay. So like I said, this is going to be my card. I'm going to trim it down just a little. This is a full quarter sheet, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I don't want it to be quite that big. I want it to be more like four by five and a quarter. That's pretty good. All right. Now on this piece, I can take and die cut a little hunk out of it, okay? So what if I took and die cut like a, I'm just thinking like, this is one of my stitched rectangles. What if I die cut that out of it? Okay, and maybe even, actually that's too big a piece, sorry, let me get a smaller, a smaller hunk, ooh, like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is die cut this portion, okay, and I'm going to hold a post-it note in here to hold it in place. And I'm gonna run through my big shot, hold on. Okay, now when I do that, what I'm left with is just this piece instead of this whole big piece, okay? So I'm gonna color in just this. Now I'm gonna also make it kind of quick and easy for coloring. So I'll choose a color combination I like. So I'm going to use Calypso Coral, um, some Rococo Rose, and let's see, some Old Olive. So these blends, um, and maybe and maybe even some mango. So this is my color combination of coloring. Okay, so first I'm gonna take some of the trick trickiness out of it. I'm gonna start with my old olive, and I'm gonna color the leaves in, because that's easy. They're all like old olive colored, right? And then, oh, there's only like one leaf on here. <laughs> Oh, here's another one. All right, I'll blend that out with my light. Okay. And then, um, oh, I see another leaf in here. One more down here. Um, then what I'm going to do is just kind of decide which flowers are gonna be which color. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is to just kind of put some color down. All right, so um, I want, these flowers here to be yellow so I'm literally going to put some yellow on here so now I know that these are assigned yellow and then I want um, actually I want this to remain white 
So I'm going to put just a little bit of color in the center here. And then my daisy will remain white. This also looks like a daisy, so I'm going to leave that one white as well. And then this flower I'm going to do with my Calypso Coral. So I'll just put a little Calypso Coral on here. And then this flower down here I'm going to do with my Rococo Rose. So I'll just put a little of that color down here. Um, and then this flower I can do, uh, actually this looks like those little yellow flowers. So we'll put a little more yellow over here. So by assigning the colors to the different flowers, it makes it pretty easy. Okay. And we're just gonna do that really quick. Okay. Uh, next, let's finish the coloring coloring. So I'll start with the yellow because that's easy. We put some of the dark down. So now let's blend it with the light. And I'm trying to remember, I think this was Sharon who asked me this question much earlier in the broadcast. Oops, got this one over here too. So we're just answering her. And I actually think that's a leaf right there. Let's put it back in here to see the rest. Aha, it is a leaf. So putting it back in here kind of helps to figure out what is what. <laughs> so we'll do a little bit more coloring since we know what that is right there and this just makes it easy to do blend that out okay uh, then let's do the rococo rose so we'll start with our dark and just where I see these darker lines on here is where I'm going to do kind of my darker coloring. And then we'll add in the lighter here in a second. And just a little more. And by the way, I'm super excited about this card. So here's my light. I'm just going to blend that out. Like so. And I also know this is going to be one of those little yellow flowers. So we'll quick color that in. All right. And then up here is our Calypso Coral. Now, they didn't, well, Calypso Coral. Same thing. I'm just going to put this on here. Now, I find when you assign the daisies to be white, that takes a lot of coloring out of it. You just gotta color the center. So that's really helpful. But what we will color the daisy in with is some clear wink of Stella. So it won't be completely boring. There will be some fun stuff happening there. But that, I mean, they look great white, but it's a lot less coloring that you need to do. So I like that. Then we'll blend this out. All right, so that looks good. So isn't that pretty so far? Okay, now if you wanna take it one more step up a notch, you can also add a little bit of pool party for the background, okay? Now you don't have to do this, but if you just color those white spaces, I'm using light pool party for this. But if you just color those white spaces, it's really going to make everything pop, especially when you throw this back into the card. Okay. And then that really highlights the white of our daisies as well. Okay. So that was easy. And I know that's a leaf, so I'm just going to quick put a little color.
color on it. And that's a leaf too. Okay, so there we have really awesome coloring on this little strip. So let's come back to our piece right here. So now we can see where it fits on here, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna pop this up on here. And then we can also add a sentiment. We can do whatever we want to do to this to make it extra awesome. And by the way, look at the backside. That's really pretty. Okay. So again, you just want to see where it fits on here because it's going to kind of fit just right. Line all those p edges up like so and then isn't that gorgeous okay i'm thinking um i'm thinking i might put it on a crumb cake card base because i would like you know the colors to really stand out so this is a technique there's lots of different ways you can do it but it's called the spotlighting technique and it just allows you to kind of spotlight a certain part of an image. But what I like about it is that it's really a lot easier to color in um, a bigger image when you do the spotlighting like this. Um, I'm going to trim just a little teensy bit more off of my card. So I think it's even on here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, but of course we're not done just quite yet. We're gonna add a little bit of ribbon to this and some of our gilded gems because they're just so pretty. So I'll add some ribbon, just do a little knot. Nothing too fancy. Well, thank you, Kathy, I'm glad you like them. Or Kathleen, sorry. Um, I it I love choosing colors together. I know it can be very intimidating even for people, but um, I really enjoy looking for color combinations. There we go. All right, now let's go back to that glue. We're going to use a super skinny border, like. You can see there's hardly any and I'm also not going right up to the edge and I'm not putting so much on that it would ooze out if if it was right up to the edge you see what I'm saying with that so that's really important okay now the sentiment I want to use I think it's on my table already is everything hold on give me a second you're amazing. So I'm just going to put that right down here at the very bottom. And I think I will use um, old olive ink since we've got the ribbon. We'll just kind of pull that together. And this might be a good card to send to somebody maybe who's, you know, an essential worker or that kind of thing. So, yeah, it would be a great mother size day card. Mother's Day card. <laughs> Mother's Day card. Yeah, that. Um, what size block is that? Do you mean this block, Melanie? Um, this is a G. Yeah, G. Okay. So, yeah, really pretty, isn't it? Okay. Oh, but we have to put our Wink Estella on the... Um, my gosh oh it's right here <laughs> on those daisies now by the way when I store woo I did not mean to do that when I store my clear wink Estella I store it upside down so that the <laughs> is always in the at the tip and I because I just refilled this it's like totally oozing but oh well it's a real sparkly daisy here today it's all good okay and now my hands are going to be sparkly. That's okay. Is the You're Amazing from the Ornate set? Yes, it is. Yep. 
it is. So there we go. So you can see, so pretty. All right, let's see, what do I have next? I think we need to come back. Oh my gosh, it's 5.36, how are we this late? Okay, I'm gonna come back to this card. Remember this one we made a long time ago? Um, okay, so this was a technique where we watercolored our, um, or first we put, uh, okay, back up, two steps. We made our own, um, our own stencil. We used the uh, embossing paste on here put it down, let it dry. This is watercolor paper. Then we watercolored over it uh, with Coastal Cabana and with uh, Pacific Point. And we did kind of two layers just to make sure it was really good. Um, and then um, we let that dry again. And now we're gonna come back and finish this up. So you can see it dried a little bit lighter than it was. And then it also kind of evened out, I think. It was a little bit more splotchy. And when it dried, it, it sort of evened out. And I don't know if it like absorbs into that paste or what it does, but I think it looks cool, so who cares? All right, so let's make this into a card. I think it's really pretty, by the way. Um, first of all, I'm gonna take and put it on a Coastal Cabana card base. Um, and by the way, I was, <laughs> if you were on here, I had pulled my, my decorative masks. So Stampin' Up! has decorative masks. There's some in the annual catalog, and then there were some that carried over from the win uh, winter catalog. I have both sets together somewhere in my office that I'd pulled out to do this technique earlier. And of course, I couldn't find them. So then I just used what was around, and I happened to have this piece from the painted glass set of dies and <laughs> so here we are I mean that's just kind of how it we just go with the flow around here all right so I've got this on here um this was just a scrap piece I had of this watercolor paper so I'm gonna just trim that down a little so we can fit it on there oh so pretty then I'm gonna take and add uh, a layer of Pacific Point because we can. I mean, I think that'll be pretty on there. And then I'm going to add my sentiment. And um, the beauty of this is that we can for sure uh Can for sure enjoy this pretty um, color combination. Now one other thing I wanted to do, so I used my frost white shimmer paint earlier. I'm going to try a different one on this and that's going to be the champagne mist. This will have a little, this is kind of like, um, kind of like the clear wink of Stella. It's Instead of white, it's still pretty translucent, but instead of white, it's uh, got a little bit more sparkle to it, I guess. I don't know how to kind of describe it. The shimmer white is kind of pearlescent-y, whereas this is a little bit more sparkly, I guess. Now, I am i don't want it, this on everything. I just want it on this piece. So I'm gonna spritz this from about 12 inches or so. And you really don't have to do it too much. I spritzed maybe three spritzes and that was probably one too many. I think I could have gotten away with less. Now you can see it's just, it It doesn't add a color, it just adds shimmer. And it's a little bit more sparkly shimmer than pearlescent -y shimmer. All right, so now I will take and adhere this to my card. Um, and the reason, by the way, this is rubbing alcohol is because it dries faster um, than water. And I, I don't know, I, it, it dries faster is the main thing. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more uh, glue on here than normal. And that's because I'm gluing this watercolor paper, which is thicker and it's also kind of warped with all the stuff we've done to it today. So I want it to really adhere well to this, to this piece. So I'm just gonna kind of press on here well. So I really want it to adhere and, and uh, stay nice. 
Okay. Then bringing our card back. Oh, it's so pretty. Uh, I'm going to pop this layer up. And to do that, I'm going to add probably a few more dimensionals than normal just because it is warped a little and I want it to come out nice and look good. I don't normally use this many dimensionals on a card. But like I said, I had an extra, so we just threw it on there. Uh, I thought it would help it kind of stick down better. Okay. So there we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now, um, what I want to do is, oh, Bruno has nothing on me. Let me tell you. <laughs> he thinks he likes dimensionals, whatever. <laughs> I buy my dimensionals by the 20s. <laughs> Actually, I once took a picture of myself surrounded by my order of dimensionals and messaged it to him. <laughs> I think that's funny. Okay, um, I want to use my itty bitty birthdays and I'm going to use this birthday wishes. This is one of my favorite stamps out of this set. You can see because I use it a lot. Um, but I want to stamp this onto my car or I've got just a little strip of white here and I think I'll stamp that in Pacific Point. What is the other color besides Pacific Point? It is Coastal Cabana which Debbie is the color that lets us know God loves us in case you were not aware of that. It's very important information. Okay. So now I want my birthday wishes to just kind of go right through the center of this. All right. And um, I'm going to quick measure this. This is two and a half inches across. So I want my birthday wishes to be about three inches. All right. So I like using my trimmer to help measure and center. stuff. Now I'm getting a little fussy, but um, I also find that I get better ends when I cut it with my trimmer than if I were to just use my um, scissors because I can't cut at a right angle with the scissors by eye 100% accurately. Now I love that we've got all this shimmer on here. Got my birthday wishes. I'm going to add some glitter enamel dots just to jazz it up a little. Um, where did my take your pick tool go? My gosh, how could I not find it on this mess? <laughs> it's around here somewhere. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff happening here. By the way, I will post on my page as soon as I find my um, my uh, decorative masks because you know I'm going to find them as soon as I'm done with this. All right, so I just put a couple on there. I didn't want to do too much, but uh, aren't they just the best? Oh, so pretty. So I'm going to leave this as is um, just because I like it as it is right now. So I don't want to, I don't, you know, if you go one step too far, then you ruin a card. I don't want to do that here. So I really like that one. All right. Let me show you the other projects I made today. <laughs> Today's did not really go as I 100% intended. <laughs> a couple of my cards did, but the rest didn't. Um, we did a little ad libbing, which is always fun because you just never know what you're going to get. Okay, so we made this card. We made this card, which, by the way, I also wanted to add a glitter enamel dot to. Okay, I also have stuff. I think I might need to go live again this week because I had some other things I wanted to, to do, but I actually really need to get going because Whitney's here and we have, we have work to do. So I wanted to add that right there. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so this is with the uh, uh, ornate 
garden suite, which by the way, if you order the suite, you get a whole class from me for free, which is a $40 value. Pretty awesome. Um, if you didn't order it from me and would like the class though, you still can. The link is in the description of this video. I also had the cows it going so pretty and another ornate, um, card. A real, this is the simple one. And then this is the fancy one, but super cute. Um, and then if you, uh, are interested, I've got a couple of exciting things coming up. So this week, um, and I'm going to write this down for you. First of all, please help me out by sharing my video. That helps so much. Um, please share to Facebook. And when you do, um, I will enter you in a drawing for free stamps. So sharing is caring. Um, share video to Facebook or YouTube. And um, I'm so what I mean is you can share it from Facebook or you can share the YouTube video to Facebook, whatever. Um, and then you'll be entered for free stamps in drawing. And Deb won our drawing this week. Deb is awesome. Um, and she was on here today. So that was always fun. I love when the winners are on because that is exciting. Um, next up, I have ooh, a Facebook class. If you ever struggle with how long it takes you to make a card or if you want help coming up with ideas, different card layouts, as well as lots of um, color combination suggestions, I highly recommend my Facebook class. It's actually the best class I offer. It is $25 for one month or $15 when you subscribe for a year uh, per month. And um, you get three lives per month. Um, the first live for April is actually tomorrow at 3 p.m. And if you're in the group, by the way, I thought my schedule was up and I found out that it's not, so I'll get it posted for you. Um, and in those lives, we do three layouts. And then I show you what to do with those layouts and different, uh, show you different ways to use those layouts. And then there's also three color combinations, um, suggestions per live. So there's nine layouts and nine color combinations per month. So it's a really great class. Um, so that's going on starting tomorrow is our first one for April. And then we have two more. So three total in the month. Also on Friday is my mountain air uh, creativity to go kit that is going to come out if you have not um, registered for that it is going to be amazing we're going to do kind of really cool techniques in it um, to create with this awesome bundle and let me just grab it for you I'm looking for the bundle here we go um, so you will need the stamp set and dies to complete these projects, but we're going to make some really great masculine cards. I think you're going to really love them. Um, so you can register for that and, um, to do, to register for that, the link is in the description of this video. By the way, if you're on my mailing list today, I, man, I emailed it twice and I'm so sorry about that. The first time was for something else because it was labeled wrong in my email service sent the wrong email basically um but I was on with the customer help today and they got me sorted out so that was good so anyway I apologize to those of you on my list who got it twice but anyway um so that is going to come out on Friday and this is going to be a really great class lots of good tech or er, cards for um for the man in your men in your life <laughs> Um, and then I think I'm going to go live again this week because I still had a few cards that I didn't do today. We just went a little longer than I thought we would. So it happens. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Um, oh, and of course, please order from me. <laughs> um, uh, your orders are so awesome. Um, and when you order with the Creativity Cave, you'll become a VIP Rewards member. I've got all kinds of great perks for that. Um, 
I've got a link for ordering. And when you spend $50, you'll get a gift from me. Um, it's an embellishment. And then when you if you spend $100 or more, you're going to get a free host set. Okay, but you got to use the host code this month. And that host code is Y9S2R. F T six, by the way, it's in the description of this video for you as well. So check all that out. I'll try and get these projects up on my blog as soon as I can. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise I'll see you back here later this week. I'll let you know. I'm not sure I got to look at my schedule when it will be, but probably Wednesday or Thursday. And then finally, I'll be back here next Monday to stamp with you. So thanks guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'm trying to get all this in the frame. <laughs> And I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Um.